getting scholarship is not easy as only 5% of the students manage to get 100% scholarship. So today I have invited Damini from We Make Scholars and she will explain her journey, how she managed to get 100% scholarship. Hi guys, I'm Sarika and welcome back to my channel, Your Knowledge Buddy. So let's invite our special guest Damini today. Hi Damini, welcome to Your Knowledge Buddy and thank you for being part of my show. Thank you. Thank you, Sarika. Thank you so much for having me here. Looking forward to you know, have this uh, as a great session. Okay. Damini, if you don't mind, can you please introduce yourself to my audience, please? Yeah, sure. Uh, so Sarika, I'm Damini. I'm co-founder of We Make Scholars. Uh, so uh, me and my co-founder, we went to the UK to do, to our master's back in 2012 to 13 batch. Mm -hmm. And we got a full scholarship for our master's in UK. And that scholarship literally covered each and every expense of us, you know, right from 100% of tuition fee, our living expenses, they used to provide us stipend for accommodation and food, and also the flight cost and visa and everything. And that's when, you know, me and my co-founder, we got into, you know, this whole scholarship thing. Uh, many of our friends and our juniors and colleagues started asking us, hey, how did you manage to get, you know, such a large sum of money through a scholarship? And uh, that's when we started a Facebook group uh, while we were still in the college. And um, many, uh, every day, so many people will ask questions, we'll put information about scholarships and this, that. And that group grew like a wildfire. It went to about 50,000 uh, members uh, by the time we finished it. It was just like one year master's and in six months, uh, the group went like so viral. And, uh, you know, looking at the need of this that, you know, people are asking so much about scholarships and also the love of people, we decided to make, uh, you know, spend more time onto it. And eventually, you know, we started We Make Scholars in 2015. So uh, we make scholars started, uh, you know, as a core international scholarship search engine. Uh, so that that was it in the early days. And later, I think towards the end of 2016, people started asking us, hey, you know what, scholarships is fine, but, you know, we are struggling in find, getting education loan as well. Uh, because, you know, banks in India are not easy to deal with. Uh, so Indian banking system, the situation is like, uh, if you know someone, if you have a contact in the bank, only then you can get a loan. So I think that's the mindset. And uh, that looked like a large enough problem to solve. And that's why we started. We started helping students with the loans as well. So I think that's what We Make Scholars stands for today, uh, helping students with education, uh, scholarships, as well as you know education loans. And we do not charge them anything. It's a completely free service. And we are funded by the Ministry of IT, Government of India. So I think that's what I, uh, you know, I, you asked about me and I told you so much about VMIX Scholars because I think that's what an entrepreneur is all about. You know, what I'm doing every day. First of all, congratulations. You guys have done a very, very well done. All, uh, I think it's helping a lot of students. And now I really feel I have invited the right person as it's going to help all the students who are watching this video. So thank you for being part of my show, Damini. Thank you. And, and Damini, I've written a couple of questions which is being currently asked by the students. And if you don't mind, can I go through it one by one with you? Yeah, sure, definitely. Okay, so my first question is, only 5% of international students get 100% scholarship. So why do you think you got lucky with 100% scholarship and not others? Okay, so I won't uh, say lucky or maybe, you know, I can say I was lucky because so many things fell in place. Uh, so I think, uh, Sarika, when people, you know, they do not get a scholarship, what I have seen is, you know, my peers and colleagues who didn't get a full scholarship, let's say when I was in uh, college and those who came and asked, I think the most common reason was they didn't know which all scholarships are open. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I think that's that's what is the key. Uh, so people, you know, they search through the university websites and university websites do publish some scholarships, but mostly those are like what the university is offering. Yes. But there are so many more scholarships, you know, offered by government bodies, by trust, foundations, which people are not aware of. Mm -hmm. So when me and Arjun, you know, we started our journey finding these scholarships, I think it took us, you know, months and months of time to find these scholarships on different websites, on going to, you know, foundation website, trust website, this, that. So we went through about 500 scholarships to find only 40 which we were eligible for. Mm -hmm. And I think that was the pain point which made us realize that, you know, this problem has to be solved. You know, people should spend their time on applying to scholarships, writing those scholarship essays, not in, you know, finding those scholarships which they are uh, eligible for. Yeah. So I think that was the, uh, you know, 
the DNA behind launching VMAX scholars. So we made sure that, you know, we make it as a platform where people can search easily. So currently VMAX scholars has more than 26,000 scholarships and people can find it with different parameters. You know, they can put their nationality, uh, you know, students from outside India also uses it mm -hmm. and they can put the course they are looking for and you know, the country they are going to, if it is UK or if it is some other country, they can, you know, even filter with that. Uh, so I think uh, that's a was, you know, that how we got it and that's how we want others to get it. And others, uh, you know, tip, if you're asking me, you know, how I got it and why others don't get it, I think there's one another advice which I would give everyone is that, you know, the key is that you keep applying for more and more. So uh, see, when I applied for 40 scholarships, it wasn't easy. You know, you have to write so many scholarship essays. Every scholarship has, you know, five questions asking for, you know, 200 words each. And sometimes you need to reiterate your answers for every scholarship. And I think it was very tough, uh, especially, you know, when you are still in the middle of your graduation, I have to manage my undergrad work. I have to write university applications. I have to do all that. And at the same time, I have to write all these scholarship essays. But I think I applied to 40 and I got the last one. Uh, so I would always say that, you know, you keep applying. The key to success is the more you apply, the better your chances would be. Good. Thanks, Tamini. So when do you think is the right time to apply for scholarship? Okay. Uh, so see, uh, that's another myth, which I think a lot of people have. A lot of students keep waiting for uh, their admission, admit letter. Uh, to apply for the scholarship and I think that's not the right way because most of these scholarships uh, it starts opening you know in year and uh, one and a half year before the intake start date mm -hmm. so for example commonwealth scholarship it's a very common scholarship for students who are going to study in the UK there is Chevening scholarship and most of these scholarships they open like so I, I applied for commonwealth and I was shortlisted you won't believe it was June uh, 2011 and I was supposed to go in September 2012 so it was you can imagine it was one year three months before is when I got a call from the ministry for the shortlisting mm -hmm. so so people don't you know start planning this early and I think that's where they miss out so uh, so you apply early start searching early even if it is you know an year or a year and a half later is when you're gonna go okay and one another thing which people need to know is that most of these scholarships do not require an admission letter Okay. So they would ask you uh, which are the preferred universities you're planning to go to. But even if you do not have an admit, they are going to you know, consider your profile based on other academic and other parameters. OK, thanks, Damini. So my next question is, I'm an average student. I'm never, I had never been a topper. So I have a lot of audience okay. as well or students who are not topper. They consider themselves as average students. So do you think average mm -hmm. students got a chance to get scholarship? Okay, uh, so I would, uh, you know, answer this question in two parts. Firstly, you need to know that, you know, there are scholarships. So there are three categories of scholarship. One is merit based, uh, which, you know, you mentioned that, mm -hmm. you know, I'm an average student. Can I get that? Mm -hmm. But there are other types of scholarships also. One is need based scholarship. Other is called a special scholarships. Mm -hmm. So need based scholarships are offered based on the financial condition of the family. It has nothing to do with the merit. So there are these are mostly, you know, the government scholarship, you know, or maybe the British government or Indian government trying to, you know, empower those who are, let's say, not very affluent, right? So uh, those are, you know, they that considers like the family income should be less than six lakhs or less than four lakhs per annum, things like that. Mm -hmm. And there are special scholarships which are offered based on other criteria other than merit. For example, there are sports scholarships. So someone who is good in sports and they've got a lot of medals and awards. So there are sports scholarships which are offered to encourage such people. Mm -hmm. uh, and for example, there are scholarships which are offered in specific research area. For example, someone, uh, let's say there was one, um, you know, trust. It was an individual who was donating uh, money. So it was like his mother expired because of breast cancer. Mm -hmm. So he wanted to offer scholarship to, you know, three people every year. Uh, those who are doing a course which is related to breast cancer right. yeah so these are called a special scholarship and it has lesser to do with the merit now coming back to the other half which is you know merit-based scholarship so of course uh, you know it depends on your merit so as you mentioned an average student but again I would say an average if you have let's say about 75 80 percent also in your you know throughout your academics your 10th your 12th and graduation you and you have, uh, you know, added, uh, you have uh, internships and you have work experience. So all those things add to your profile. It adds to your profile and it kind of, you know, increases your chances of getting a scholarship. But the um, 
the selection process behind a merit scholarship is like you know let's say if i am offering 100 scholarships mm -hmm. and it is a merit based scholarship mm -hmm. and i get 500 applications which means i'm going to choose top 100 mm -hmm. so so you can be meritorious but if there are 100 people better than you right. you would not get it mm -hmm. but at the same time you could be in 80s uh, your percentages could be in 80s but all the applications that scholarship body got are from people you know who even who are not even in 80s so then you stand a chance right yeah. so so it's kind of you know the top 100 in that way so i think everyone should apply even if they feel that hey i'm kind of average you never know what sort of competition you have so what if they don't get large enough you know pool of applications you stand a chance yeah good thanks for encouraging words so anyone who is uh, seeing this video i will highly encourage you to apply for scholarship irrespective of whether you are a smart student or average student like me okay <laughs> okay Damini, thanks so i'm going to move to my next question so um you talked about essay so what tips do you give to people how they write their essay which is also known as statement of purpose any tips okay so the statement of purpose is a very important part of even, even your scholarship application, even your university application. I think there are not, you know, many tips I'm going to provide, but I think the core uh, outline of your scholarship, uh, of your SOP should reflect what you stand for. Okay, so there is this one talk by Steve Jobs, which says connecting the dots, right? So when you're writing your SOP, please make sure you connect the dots very properly. So whatever you have done in the past, right from, you know, what you did when you were in high school, what you did when you were in your graduation, your extracurricular, what all you did, make sure, you know, all of that shows that, you know, whatever you are today and you are the best version of you with whatever you did in the past. So I think that story has to come uh, very properly and other conditions of SOP, you know, thousand words and this, that I think that they can find online. But I think this is something very important. This should come. Okay. Thanks, Damini. So I'm going to ask my next question based on what you said in your introdu introduction. So there are plenty of students who struggle to get student loan. So is there anything your team or company can help them with? Okay. So yeah, uh, Sarika, we do help students. So we stand as a you know platform for students to find finance for their studies abroad, which includes scholarships as well as education loans. Mm -hmm. So as I mentioned, getting an education loan in India is not very easy. You know, banks have their own criteria and all. So now you as an outsider, you might feel, you know, it is bread and butter for the bank, right? Banks make money on loans. So why, why is it tough? I mean, they should be providing it very easily, but that's not the ground reality. See, the biggest banks in India, they kind of try to avoid education loans because, you know, they don't get the money back very quickly. So all education loans have this moratorium period, which means the students do not have to pay while they are studying. Right. So banks start getting their money back much later, or like two years later or one year later. Mm -hmm. So that's why banks do not really prefer to give education loan. And I think that's a job at VMAX scholars to fight against all these odds and to fight against all these bankers and make sure that the student gets an education loan. If that means that, you know, that's the only way they can finance their education to fulfill their dream of studies abroad. Yeah. So we help them with the entire process. So when someone requests for a callback on our website, we assign them a financial officer. The financial officer handhold, handholds them from right from the beginning, you know, right from whether they are eligible for a loan or not, and the documentation, as well as, you know, uh, if there is any issue at the bank branch, they talk to the bank branch. So right till, you know, sanction and disbursement, this financial officer will be there. And as I mentioned, all the services of Emix Plus are completely free. We are funded by the government of India, Ministry of IT. And uh, we can help these students with both the kinds of loans, secured loans, which are offered with a collateral security, and also unsecured loans, which are offered without a collateral security. And uh, many universities in UK, they are eligible for, you know, even up to 30, 40 lakhs unsecured loans. Okay, thank you very much for sharing this information. At least I wasn't aware of that. So all the students who are struggling to get student loan, you know where to go now. And that also free of cost. Okay, yeah. uh, so Damini, thank you very much. And you have shared a lot of tips. Any uh, tip that you want to give to our audience, either regarding scholarship or student loan before we wrap this video? Okay, so Sarika, the last thing I would say is that, you know, a lot of people, they miss on the opportunity when they keep waiting for scholarship results very much till the end. So what happens is the scholarship bodies, they generally declare their results mostly in the June or July uh, every year. Uh, so which is, you know, almost towards the end uh, of the student, you know, application process and all. So I think students do not arrange their alternate form of funds. So they keep relying that, hey, you know, I would get a scholarship, which you, as you rightly said, only 5% of the students get a full scholarship. 
leadership so i would you know advise all those students that you know even if you are very hopeful that you are going to get a scholarship mm -hmm. make sure you apply for a loan also parallelly uh, you know what's going to happen in the worst is you will lose that 10 20000 of you know your loan processing fee which you have paid and you would eventually get a scholarship but you know if you do not get a scholarship in the month of june or july i'm telling you you are going to be in a you know very bad phase uh, you would not have funds arranged and it's almost going to look like that you're losing on your dream so please apply for an education loan like at least 3 4 months uh, before your uh, you know visa date or so and eventually if you get a scholarship you know you're lucky so you can totally discard the loan and not use it and you're, you're never going to be penalized for that good yeah. Oh my god that was another important tip. Thank you very much Tamini and thank you for spending your Sunday and recording this video with me. Thank you and good luck to you guys. Yeah, thank you Sarika. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye bye. Thanks Tamini. Thanks for sharing all your information tips. So for all the international students who are planning to move to UK or anywhere in the world and planning to get scholarship, make sure go and check out her channel. We make scholars and get in touch with them if you are struggling to find even student loans. Good luck to all the students who are applying for scholarship and thanks for watching my video till the end and I'll see you guys soon with my next video. Till then, keep learning.